The Council of Jerusalem or Apostolic Council was held in Jerusalem around AD 50. It is unique among the ancient pre-ecumenical councils in that it is considered by Catholics and Orthodox to be a prototype and forerunner of the later ecumenical councils and a key part of Christian ethics. The council decided that Gentile converts to Christianity were not obligated to keep most of the Law of Moses, including the rules concerning circumcision of males. The council did, however, retain the prohibitions on eating blood, meat containing blood, and meat of animals not properly slain, and on fornication and idolatry, sometimes referred to as the Apostolic Decree or Jerusalem Quadrilateral. Accounts of the council are found in Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 in two different forms, the Alexandrian and Western versions and also possibly in Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 2. Some scholars dispute that Galatians chapter 2 is about the Council of Jerusalem notably because Galatians chapter 2 describes a private meeting while other scholars dispute the historical reliability of the Acts of the Apostles. Historical background the Council of Jerusalem is generally dated to 48 AD, roughly 15 to 25 years after the crucifixion of Jesus, between 26 and 36 AD. Acts 15 and Galatians chapter 2 both suggest that the meeting was called to debate whether or not male Gentiles who were converting to become followers of Jesus were required to become circumcised. Circumcision was considered repulsive during the period of Hellenization of the Eastern Mediterranean. At the time, most followers of Jesus, which historians refer to as Jewish Christians, were Jewish by birth, and even converts would have considered the early Christians as a part of Judaism. According to Alistair McGrath, the Jewish Christians affirmed every aspect of the then contemporary Second Temple Judaism with the addition of the belief that Jesus was the Messiah. Unless males were circumcised, they could not be God's people. The meeting was called to decide whether circumcision for Gentile converts was requisite for community membership since certain individuals were teaching that, you, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Circumcision as a mandate was associated with Abraham see also Abrahamic covenant, but it is cited as the custom of Moses, because Moses is considered the traditional giver of the law as a whole. The circumcision mandate was made more official and binding in the Mosaic law covenant. In John chapter 7 verse 22 the words of Jesus are reported to be that Moses gave the people circumcision. Topic. Issues and outcome. Topic. The purpose of the meeting, according to Acts, was to resolve a disagreement in Antioch, which had wider implications than just circumcision, since circumcision is the everlasting sign of the Abrahamic covenant Genesis chapter 17 verses 9 to 14. Some of the Pharisees who had become believers insisted that it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. KJV, the primary issue which was addressed related to the requirement of circumcision, as the author of Acts relates, but other important matters arose as well, as the apostolic decree indicates. The dispute was between those, such as the followers of the pillars of the church, led by James, who believed, following his interpretation of the Great Commission, that the church must observe the Torah, i.e. the rules of traditional Judaism, one, and Paul the Apostle, who believed there was no such necessity. See also Supersessionism, New Covenant, Antinomianism, Hellenistic Judaism, Paul the Apostle and Judaism. At the Council, following advice offered by Simon Peter Acts chapter 15 verses 7 to 11 and Acts chapter 15 verse 14, Barnabas and Paul gave an account of their ministry among the Gentiles Acts chapter 15 verse 12, and the Apostle James quoted from the words of the prophet Amos Acts chapter 15 verses 16 to 17, quoting Amos chapter 9 verses 11 to 12. James added his own words to the quotation, Known to God from eternity are all his works and then submitted a proposal, which was accepted by the Church and became known as the Apostolic Decree. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals and from blood, too, for the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. Acts chapter 15 verses 19 to 21. 
Acts chapter 15 verses 23 to 29 sets out the content of the letter written in accordance with James's proposal. The Western version of Acts, see Acts of the Apostles, manuscripts, adds the negative form of the golden rule. And whatever things ye would not have done to yourselves, do not do to another. Three, this determined questions wider than that of circumcision, particularly dietary questions, but also fornication and idolatry and blood, and also the application of biblical law to non-Jews. It was stated by the apostles and elders in the council, "...the Holy Spirit and we ourselves have favored adding no further burden to you, except these necessary things, to abstain from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication." If you carefully keep yourselves from these things, you will prosper. Acts chapter 15 verses 27 to 28 and this apostolic decree was considered binding on all the other local Christian congregations in other regions. See also Biblical law directed at non-Jews, seven laws of Noah, Biblical law in Christianity, and the Ten Commandments in Christianity. The writer of Acts gives an account of a restatement by James and the elders in Jerusalem of the contents of the letter on the occasion of Paul's final Jerusalem visit, immediately prior to Paul's arrest at the temple, recounting, When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. Acts chapter 21 verses 17 to 18 ESV The elders then proceed to notify Paul of what seems to have been a common concern among Jewish believers that he was teaching diaspora Jewish converts to Christianity to forsake Moses telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs They remind the assembly that as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality." In the view of some scholars, the reminder of James and the elders here is an expression of concern that Paul was not fully teaching the decision of the Jerusalem Council letter to Gentiles, particularly in regard to non-strangled kosher meat, which contrasts with Paul advice to Gentiles in Corinth, to eat whatever is sold in the meat markets. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 25. Topic. Historicity Topic. The description of the Apostolic Council in Acts 15, generally considered the same event described in Galatians chapter 2, is considered by some scholars to be contradictory to the Galatians account. The historicity of Luke's account has been challenged, and was rejected completely by some scholars in the mid to late 20th century. However, more recent scholarship inclines towards treating the Jerusalem Council and its rulings as a historical event, though this is sometimes expressed with caution. Bruce Metzger's textual commentary on the Greek New Testament includes a summary of current research on the topic as of about 1994. In conclusion, therefore, it appears that the least unsatisfactory solution of the complicated textual and exegetical problems of the apostolic decree is to regard the fourfold decree as original foods offered to idols, strangled meat, eating blood, and unchastity, whether ritual or moral, and to explain the two forms of the threefold decree in some such way as those suggested above. An extensive literature exists on the text and exegesis of the apostolic decree. According to Jacques Dupont, Present-day scholarship is practically unanimous in considering the Eastern text of the decree as the only authentic text in four items and in interpreting its prescriptions in a sense not ethical but ritual. Les problèmes du livre des actes de praise les travaux récents Louvain, 1950, p.70. Interpreting the Council's decision Topic. James's apostolic decree was that the requirement of circumcision for males was not obligatory for Gentile converts, possibly in order to make it easier for them to join the movement. However, the council did retain the prohibitions against Gentile converts eating meat containing blood, or meat of animals not properly slain. It also retained the prohibitions against fornication and idol worship. The decree may have been a major act of differentiation of the church from its Jewish roots. Jewish Encyclopedia, New Testament, Spirit of Jewish proselytism in Christianity states, 
For great as was the success of Barnabas and Paul in the heathen world, the authorities in Jerusalem insisted upon circumcision as the condition of admission of members into the church, until, on the initiative of Peter, and of James, the head of the Jerusalem church, it was agreed that acceptance of the Noachian laws, namely, regarding avoidance of idolatry, fornication, and the eating of flesh cut from a living animal, should be demanded of the heathen desirous of entering the church. Jewish Encyclopedia, Gentiles, Gentiles may not be taught the Torah states R. Emden, in a remarkable apology for Christianity contained in his appendix to Seder Olam, pp. 32b 34b, Hamburg, 1752, gives it as his opinion that the original intention of Jesus, and especially of Paul, was to convert only the Gentiles to the seven moral laws of Noah and to let the Jews follow the Mosaic law which explains the apparent contradictions in the New Testament regarding the laws of Moses and the Sabbath. The Catholic Encyclopedia article on Judaizers states, Paul, on the other hand, not only did not object to the observance of the Mosaic law, as long as it did not interfere with the liberty of the Gentiles, but he conformed to its prescriptions when occasion required 1 Corinthians 9.20. Thus he shortly after circumcised Timothy Acts chapter 16 verses 1 to 3 and he was in the very act of observing the mosaic ritual when he was arrested at Jerusalem Acts chapter 21 verse 26 SQQ Joseph Fitzmier disputes the claim that the apostolic decree is based on Noahide law Gen 9 and instead proposes Lev 17 to 18 as the basis see also Leviticus chapter 18 he also argues that the decision was meant as a practical compromise to help Jewish and Gentile Christians to get along, not a theological statement intended to bind Christians for all time. According to the 19th-century Roman Catholic Bishop Karl Joseph von Heffel, the Apostolic Decree of the Jerusalem Council has been obsolete for centuries in the West, though it is still recognized and observed by the Greek Orthodox Church. Acts 28 hyperdispensationalists, such as the 20th century Anglican E. W. Bullinger, would be another example of a group that believes the decree and everything before Acts 28 no longer applies. See also Ancient Church Councils Antinomianism Biblical law in Christianity Binding and loosing, brotherly love, philosophy, Christian Torah submission, circumcision controversy in early Christianity, circumcision in the Bible hashtag in rabbinic literature, circumcision in the Bible, Jewish Christians, joint declaration on the doctrine of justification, Judaizers, legalism, theology, new perspective on Paul. Pauline Christianity Restorationism, Christian Primitivism Christian Ethics Topic. Footnotes Topic. Carat Galatians chapter 2 verse 12 Carat Robert Eisenman in James the brother of Jesus identifies Paul with Ananias the Jewish merchant as described by Josephus, Jewish Antiquities 20.2.3-4, who proselytized Gentiles teaching them that faith in God is superior to circumcision. Carat there are two major versions of Acts, Alexandrian and Western, with preference generally given to the Alexandrian, see Bruce Metzger's textual commentary on the Greek New Testament which has for the Western 15-2. For Paul spoke maintaining firmly that they should stay as they were when converted, but those who had come from Jerusalem ordered them, Paul and Barnabas and certain others, to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders that they might be judged before them about this question. Carat according to Bruce Metzger Textual commentary on the Greek New Testament, the Apostolic Decree 15 .29, 15 .20, contain many problems concerning text and exegesis, it is possible 
Fornication means marriage within the prohibited Levitical degrees, Leviticus chapter 18 verses 6 to 18, which the rabbis described as forbidden for pornia or mixed marriages with pagans, Numbers chapter 25 verse 1. Also compare 2 Corinthians 6.14 or participation in pagan worship, which had long been described by Old Testament prophets as spiritual adultery and which, in fact, offered opportunity in many temples for religious prostitution, and extensive literature exists on the text and exegesis, NRSV has things polluted by idols, fornication, whatever has been strangled, blood, NIV has food polluted by idols, sexual immorality, meat of strangled animals, blood, young. S has pollutions of the idols, whoredom, strangled thing, blood, gauze. Unvarnished New Testament has pollution of idolatrous sacrifices, unchastity, meat of strangled animals, blood, Nab has pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, meat of strangled animals, blood. Karl Joseph von Heffel S. Commentary on Canon II of Gangra notes, we further see that, at the time of the Synod of Gangra, the rule of the Apostolic Synod with regard to blood and things strangled was still in force. With the Greeks, indeed, it continued always in force as their eucologies still show. Balsamon also, the well-known commentator on the canons of the Middle Ages, in his commentary on the 63rd Apostolic Canon, expressly blames the Latins because they had ceased to observe this command. What the Latin Church, however, thought on this subject about the year 400, is shown by St. Augustine in his work Contra Faustum, where he states that the apostles had given this command in order to unite the heathens and Jews in the one Ark of Noah, but that then, when the barrier between Jewish and heathen converts had fallen, this command concerning things strangled and blood had lost its meaning, and was only observed by few. But still, as late as the 8th century, Pope Gregory III forbade the eating of blood or things strangled under threat of a penance of forty days. No one will pretend that the disciplinary enactments of any council, even though it be one of the undisputed ecumenical synods, can be of greater and more unchanging force than the decree of that first council, held by the holy apostles at Jerusalem, and the fact that its decree has been obsolete for centuries in the West is proof that even ecumenical canons may be of only temporary utility and may be repealed by disuse, like other laws. Carat Hillel the Elder when asked by a Gentile to teach the whole Torah while standing on one foot cited the negative form of the Golden Rule. Rule, also cited in Tobit 4.15. Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, part of the Sermon on the Mount, cited the positive form as summary of the law and prophets, care it whether or not Galatians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 is a record of the Council of Jerusalem or a different event is not agreed. Paul writes of laying his gospel before the others, privately, not as in a council. It has been argued that Galatians was written as Paul was on his way to the council see Paul the Apostle. Raymond E. Brown in Introduction to the New Testament argues that they are the same event but each from a different viewpoint with its own bias. Carat Acts 16 says Paul personally circumcised Timothy, even though his father was Greek, because his mother was a Jewish believer, i.e. a Jewish Christian. Carat some took freedom in Christ to mean lawlessness, for example, Acts chapter 21 verse 21. Carat possibly a reference to the Ebionites Carat Acts chapter 15 verse 19 Carat Hans Konzelman Carat Christopher Rowland, Christian Origins SPCK 1985 p. 234 topic References topic, topic Further reading topic Badinas, Robert. Christ the End of the Law, Romans 10.4 in Pauline Perspective, 1985 ISBN 0-905774-93-0 Brown, Raymond E. An Introduction to the New Testament. Anchor Bible Series, 1997. ISBN 0-385-24767-2. Bruce, Frederick Fivey. Peter, Stephen, James and John, Studies in Early Non-Pauline Christianity Bruce, Frederick Fivey. Men and Movements in the Primitive Church, Studies in Early Non-Pauline Christianity Clark, A.C. The Acts of the Apostles Dunn, James D.G. The Incident at Antioch Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 to 18 JSNT 18 1983 PG 95 to 122 Dunn James DG Jesus Paul and the Law ISBN 0 664 25095 5 Dunn James DG the Theology of Paul's Letter to the Galatians Chapter 1993 ISBN 0-521-35953-8 Dunn, James D. G. 
The Theology of Paul The Apostle Eerdmans 1997 ISBN 0 8028 3844 8 Ehrman, Bart D. Lost Christianities, The Battle for Scripture and the Faiths We Never Knew 2003 Eisenman, Robert, 1997. James the Brother of Jesus, The Key to Unlocking the Secrets of Early Christianity and the Dead Sea Scrolls. ISBN 0-670-86932-5 A Cultural Historian's Dissenting View Based on Contemporary Texts. Elsner, Jass. Imperial Rome and Christian Triumph, Oxford History of Early Non-Pauline Christianity 1998 ISBN 0-19-284201-3 Gauze, Andy. The Unvarnished New Testament 1991 ISBN 0 99 2 Kim, Seyun Paul and the New Perspective, Second Thoughts on the Origin of Paul's Gospel 2001 ISBN 0 8028 4974 1 Maccoby, Chaim. The Mythmaker, Paul and the Invention of Christianity. New York, Harper & Row, 1986. ISBN 0 06 015582 5. MacDonald, Dennis Ronald, 1983. The Legend and the Apostle, The Battle for Paul in Story and Canon Philadelphia, Westminster Press. Metzger, Bruce M. A Textual Commentary on the Greek New Testament 1975 ISBN 3-438-06010-8 Mount, Christopher N. Pauline Christianity, Luke Acts and the Legacy of Paul 2001 Ropes, J. H., The Text of Acts, Vol. 3. The Beginnings of Christianity, Part 1, The Acts of the Apostles, London, Macmillan & Co., Ltd., 1926 Sanders, E.P. Paul and Palestinian Judaism, A Comparison of Patterns of Religion 1977 ISBN 0-8006-1899-8 Sanders, E.P. Paul the Law and the Jewish People 1983 Sanders, E.P. Jesus and Judaism, Fortress Press, 1987, ISBN 0-8006-2061-5 Simon, Marcel. The Apostolic Decree and Its Setting in the Ancient Church. Bulletin of the John Rylands Library, Lee, 1969-70, pp. 437-460 Telfer, West the Dadash and the Apostolic Synod of Antioch The Journal of Theological Studies, 1939, pp. 133-146, 258-271 Westerholm, Stephen. Perspectives Old and New on Paul, the Lutheran Paul and His Critics 2003 ISBN 0-8028-4809-5 Wright, N.T. What St. Paul Really Said, Was Paul of Tarsus the Real Founder of Christianity? 1997 ISBN 0-8028-4445-6 External links topic NA26 Greek Acts 15 Catholic Encyclopedia, Judaizers Catholic Encyclopedia, Apostolic Canons de Dash Apostolic Constitutions Didascalia Apostolorum Jewish Antiquities 20 New Perspective on Paul Early Christian Writings Jewish Encyclopedia, Hillel v. Shammai Jewish Encyclopedia, Didascalia Gentiles and Circumcision Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge, Apostolic Council at Jerusalem All You Want to Know About Councils and Early Christians The E-Journal, The Gentile Mission and the Tabernacle of David